One of the tasks that I have here, being the first after lunch speaker, is to keep you awake for the more exciting talks that follow mine. Uh, but what I want to do in the course of this is to try to set a context for what you're going to be experiencing this week. Uh, one of the things that I want to talk about a little bit is the cyber infrastructure that really enables this biomedical research and in particular personalized medicine, which is one of the themes of this particular seminar series and the theme of this particular uh, summer institute. To do that, I want to talk a little bit about this resource, NBCR, the National Biomedical Computation Resource. It is, uh, as you can see uh, from what we have here, it really is to help enable, uh, catalyze, and, and conduct biomedical research uh, by combining, if you will, technologies, which I'll talk a little bit about, uh, as particular computational informatics technologies, and focus them on targeted, not everything, but on targeted uh, translational and, and multi-scale challenges in the biomedical arena. Now, NBCR is one of maybe 50 uh, NIH research resources throughout the country. And those resources uh, really have five major activities that are associated with them. One, of course, is the uh, technology development, the tools that you're studying about today. Another is collaborative research, and you'll hear from some of our collaborators throughout today. Uh, in fact, one of the speakers that today, uh, Jack Johnson, is one of the collaborators that help guide the development of our tools. Thirdly, we provide services. In our case, it's often in terms of software that's provided or actually web services that one can use. We do training, which is exactly why we're here today, and also do dissemination at various meetings. So what I want to do is talk a little bit about uh, you know, where we're going and the type of themes that you'll be hearing about this week. Uh, we've been very fortunate to be renewed uh, by NIH uh, for another five years, and that just started uh, in May this year. And in our renewal, we focused on three major activities that we thought with the technologies we could actually make some progress with uh, over the next five years. Uh, one of which is really the improved treatment planning for heart disease through individual patient care. Uh, and one of the reasons we think that we can make a big difference now is both because of the new types of modality for collecting data, but in particular, if you take a look at the graph that's up there, over the course of a number of, of years since 2003, we've really, because of the computation and the efficiency of codes, been able to increase the ability to capture in all, and closer to real time the beating in the simulation of a heart. And we think that by the end uh, of the next five years, we'll be able to have real time simulation of, of, of cardiac. The second area that we wanted to focus on is really understanding uh, the realistic subcellular structure, geometry, if you will, and how it plays out uh, and affects, in, in one of the particular cases you'll hear about, uh, in the heart cell, how the structure of the T-tubules uh, affect perhaps the mechanical interactions in the heart. And we're really looking at this region, uh, if you will, we're between the light mic uh, microscope and the electron microscope, some of that overlap, uh, and really looking at things from the supramolecular level all the way up to the sub uh, subcellular and also cellular level. And finally, uh, the third area that we've been focusing on has really been the speeding drug discovery by creating and improving uh, and linking together many tools that exist already, uh, and really to create this type of computational pipeline. Uh, and in fact, that is in fact the theme of what comes up later after I get off the, the stage here. And we do that by creating the tools, the simulation packages, and the, and the, and the usable cyber infrastructure uh, in this case. So let me focus a little bit on the tools, or on, on, excuse me, on the technologies that we see coming along. Uh, and then go back to some of the things that we've been able to accomplish. So this is rather old. This is back in 2001, where an article in Scientific American really said, look, uh, everyone has heard about Moore's Law, which is sort of the doubling of the computer chip and its capacity for the same dollar amount about every 18 months. Uh, you've also, there are similar laws, these sort of power laws for data storage which is increasing and doubling in capacity about every 12 months, and then in networking, 
itself every nine months. And these laws really gave light to a whole new way of thinking that it really isn't any more the networking that's going to be the bottleneck. It's really going to be the computing that's going to slow things down if you look out over a long period of time. Uh, with that, NSF and a number of other agencies really began to lay out something called a plan for cyber infrastructure, where it envisioned bringing together uh, computational resources, uh, large equipments for uh, observation of data, a large amount of digital collections, uh, a lot of visual tools and software, <coughs> coupled with, via the network, people. And this is sort of the plan that had been laid out by NSF and a lot of the community uh, from about 2001, 2002. There was a major report by NSF in 2003. And it sort of played itself out now over, uh, over till 2009. In 2007, NSF came out with another report that really was an internal report to NSF, but just emphasized, in fact, that high performance computing was an important component of their resource, uh, and as well as uh, data as going to be a driver. But it also focused on the people collaborations that they really see as these virtual teams in the future, people distributed working together. Now, I'm citing NSF here because they really have taken a lot of leadership in actually filling this out, and NIH has been if you will, our resource has been one that play along and help contribute to this particular vision. But what's been very interesting, and you're going to hear about that in one of the talks, is there is now actually a new business model for being able to compute, if you will, uh, without the, the sense of large resources. Uh, Amazon.com is one example, uh, or the EC2 uh, computing, where you really can now uh, you know, move away from the vision of I have to make my software work on someone else's computer with their own software is I can create my entire package and just use the machines. Uh, and this is now a really new business model uh, for being able to access uh, computational resources. And one of the things we hope to do is actually then create those types of images that you can just check out when you go on to Amazon.com when they say, welcome, Peter. Let us tell you about the new special we have for you today. Okay. So the other major trend, and second major trend, is really data. And with the data has really been the development of instrumentation. Instrumentation that is, develop, uh, that is actually creating more data at finer resolutions than we've had in the past. And so when we say that we're having a whole set of new data come along, it's not just the data themselves, but is what we do with the data that's very, very important through various types of refinement uh, to various ways of moving that, those data into models through a variety of tools that we use to actually predict. Okay, so the second major trend is, is this one of, of data being produced uh, through new types of instrumentation and the tools we need to actually manipulate it. And the third trend, really, that we, we capitalized on was really the mathematics. That's necessary, if you will, to actually take the, the raw data and move it into those types of, uh, if you will, move it into those types of models to be able to do predictive modeling with. And you'll hear some examples of that. Uh, in particular, I just heard that there's been a lot of progress on the T-tubule structures, one of the posters outside uh, by Anushka uh, uh, Mihailova uh, and UA10 uh, actually has some very interesting new results on that. But there are also ways of, of mathematics to improve the algorithms of the images themselves. And several of you heard about that today in one of the uh, earlier uh, tutorials. And of course, these finite element codes themselves provide certain efficiency of calculations that will allow us to reach that goal by the end of the next five years of actually capturing real time that heartbeat in its regular uh, biological time. So, uh, 